run-of-the-mill arcade racing with unusual handling but actually quite enjoyable. This is Need for Speed, yet another reused name to confuse everyone. Ok, so I might be a little bit late to the party, but I am reviewing it ahead of the almost yearly release cycle. It will come to no one's surprise that Neva Speed is a racing game. This time around it's an open world setting in a city which is in eternal darkness. The story is quite frankly awful, as we've come to expect from racing games. You're inducted into a group of friends, each of which conveniently are a specialist in a different area of racing. The only reason I can see for them all being together is that they're all fundamentally irritating people that say dope and bro too much. Need for Speed is one of the few new games I've played on Origin which throws you straight into the game, and what makes it worse is I couldn't access the menu because for unknown reasons they decided to change the menu button to backspace, rather than escape, you know, like in almost every game ever. They didn't even bind escape for another purpose. The controls are otherwise pretty normal, but I did find this annoying that the loading screens only show you the controls for an Xbox controller, even if you don't have one plugged in, it's just plain lazy, especially for a big AAA name like Need for Speed. Anyway, the most important part of every racing game in my opinion is the handling, which I have to say this is some of the weirdest handling I've ever seen. It's very arcadey, but that isn't the issue, it just feels really floaty, sometimes you reach the end of a drift and the car doesn't seem like it's even on the floor, it just slides around like it's on ice. Then other times the car just seems to lock up entirely, you can't initiate a drift and the car just plows on like you're not even steering at all. Regardless of all its weird moments though, I do find the handling quite enjoyable, but I have to say that I favoured the drifting as other styles just seem less interesting, and they all seem to be about as fast as each other anyway. If I was to compare the handling to another game, it's probably closest to Ridge Racer, but because it doesn't consistently let you drift, it doesn't always feel like you're in control. I suspect this is caused by the tuning options which allow you to give your car a bias towards drift or grip styles. This system is very easy to use as you have several different options like tyre pressures, braking bias, drift assistance, etc which you can adjust as you please and it has a little bar at the top which indicates which style you're moving towards. It's very intuitive but probably not detailed enough for hardened racers. The actual upgrade side of things dictates how far you can go with some of your adjustments. You can't adjust the strength of your springs until you buy adjustable suspension and you get the usual range of upgrades like exhaust, turbos, cooling, etc. And then there's the visual customization, which is a very mixed bag from what I can see. I don't know if I just chose the wrong cars, but a lot of them had very limited options when it came to modifications. The only car that it really let me go wild on was the 1932 Ford, which was clearly put in the game just to become a hot rod. In terms of the car selection, it's pretty varied despite only having 50 cars to choose from. The majority are newer cars, but there's also a spattering of older cars like Boss Mustangs, 90s Skylines, and even an old Volvo if you've given up on the whole racing dream thing. But the problem is that you can only hold 10 cars at any one time, 5 of which sit in your garage and 5 which sit in an imaginary warehouse, and it doesn't make sense to have any limit on this since it only has to render 5 at any one time anyway. The warehouse should have been unlimited. It wouldn't be so bad, but 5 of the cars that you get in the game as prizes just block the garage up even further. One thing that is definitely worth mentioning is that police chases in this are really bad. I'm not even sure they can be called chases, they usually consist of some flashing lights which quickly fade off into the distance because they're too slow to catch you most of the time, and even if they do they never seem to actually arrest you. On the challenges which you have to hit certain targets like evade the police for 5 minutes, you basically have to slow down and drive alongside the police so that they don't get lost, occasionally driving around them when they move in front of you. The biggest problem that they actually cause is when you're in a police chase all of the events disappear off the map and you can't enter them until you evade the police, meaning that if you've just been spotted before entering an event, you have to do another lap around the block and hope that they don't follow you. They serve as an inconvenience rather than any sort of challenge. I already mentioned that the story was god awful and the characters are painful to listen to, but because of the over the top cheesy nature of it all, the FMV sequences do start to grow on you a little bit by the end. They're close to capturing that classic EA FMV feel, but they're not quite there, but I did really like the scenes which have your customised car in. The soundtrack, while it's not quite as good as some of the old Need for Speed titles, isn't actually too bad. I would have liked a little bit more variety, but it was easy enough to listen to, with plenty of big names like The Prodigy, Chemical Brothers and Avicii. I was also happy to hear I Am Rock make its return, even if it is a terrible song. Verdict time. Well, it's Need for Speed. It's generic racing at its most average. It isn't bad, but it's far from great. I did enjoy my time playing it, but I didn't feel like it's changed in about the last 10 years, and I think the earlier Need for Speeds, despite being dated, are actually better games because they actually have character. I do like that they've incorporated so many different features from other games like the crashes and their misses from Burnout, the drifting from Ridge Racer, the raps and decal editors as seen in Forza, but by doing this it loses all kinds of identity. It could quite easily just be called Racing Game. You get a decent amount of game time from it, I've finished each of the main stories in about 20 hours, and there's still more events to try out if I so wish. 
I would give it a cautious recommendation, simply saying that it's alright and I had fun playing it. Oh yeah, and be prepared to be shown can after can of monster through the FMVs.